This is Dr. Chris's Radio of Horror program at 91.3 FM, WCUW in Worcester, Massachusetts, on a recorded interview. Uh, we're recording this on the 19th of April, 2020. So if you are still in quarantine at the time of listening to this, happy quarantine, and hopefully you are being safe and healthy. But what better thing to be safe and healthy staying at home and watching than one of my favorite television series, and a lot of people's favorite television series. In fact, I was introduced to this by my mom, and Chris Carter, creator of The X-Files as well, had mentioned it. Uh, Kolchak the Night Stalker, the TV series, was on in the 70s starring Darren McGa- the late great Darren McGavin, who you might know as Pops from Christmas Story or the Red Skull Stoolie from the 1990s Captain America movie. <laughs> we have the author of the Kolchak Night Stalker companion book on the show with us, and he's actually trying to get it updated. We have Mark... Tell the audience a little bit about the companion book that you're trying to redo and your history with the, uh, the, the, the you're the writer of the original one that came out, uh, ooh, what, 30 years ago now? Well, the, the first edition was called Night Stalking, and uh, it was published in 1991. And uh, it kind of grew out of, uh, you know, I, I didn't really kind of set out to write a book about the Night Stalker. Uh, I actually, 10 years before, I had actually set out to write the, a book about the Twilight Zone. Um, my favorite series of all time and I I thought I would write the history of the Twilight Zone I was working on my first book and I always told everybody what my second book was going to be which would be the Twilight Zone and then I had the kind of experience that uh, a lot of authors have is I walked into a bookstore in 1982 and there it was Mark Scott Secrees the Twilight Zone companion the history of the Twilight Zone and I couldn't even get pissed off about it because um Mark had done such a really spectacular job on that book. It was first rate, and um, uh, and I could, and I wouldn't have done nearly as good a job as Mark had done on it. Um, but shortly after that book was published, I became the TV critic at the Akron Beacon Journal, and I was in perfect position uh, to write that kind of a history. So I set my sights on another favorite TV show, which was Columbo, and um, I, I I set out to write as good a book on Columbo as uh, Mark done on the Twilight Zone. And uh, 1989, that was published as The Columbo File. It got very good reviews, and it was considered one of the better books on on, on TV shows. And when that book was published, um, I got a call from a, a, a small publisher in New York uh, who said that, um, I love your, your, your Columbo book. I'm a big fan. I said, well, thank you very much. And uh, he said, have you ever considered doing a similar type of book on the Night Stalker? And I said, well, I love the Night Stalker. I became a journalist because of the Night Stalker uh, and Carl Kolschak. Uh, I just didn't know that there was a publisher out there crazy enough to do that book. And he said, well, I'm crazy enough to do that book. Um, let, let's do it. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, hold on. I said, let, I tell you what, I will call Dan Curtis, who produced the original movie, uh, Darren McGavin, who starred as Carl Kolschak, Richard Matheson, who wrote the uh, teleplay for the first movie and the sequel, The Night Strangler, and Jeff Rice, who created the character. If the four of them agree to cooperate with this, I'll do it. And in very short order, all four of them said yes. So um, I was off to the races, and that book was published in 1991 as Night Stalking. Um, I was immediately, I won't say... Um, Disenchanted with it. I'm, I'm still very proud of that book, and um, I like it a lot. But the um, the design was not very good. Uh, the distribution was not very good, and I immediately realized that I had not done as much of a service to the series as I had to the two movies. I had done a much deeper dive in that first edition with the the two movies, and so um, a, a couple years later. Um, Pomegranate Press, Catherine Lee Scott, uh, who had been on Dark Shadows, uh, played Maggie Evans on Dark Shadows. She had started a press uh, called Pomegranate Press. And she uh, called me and asked me if I'd like to revise it and do a new edition with a better distribution and better design. And uh, I, I jumped on that opportunity because I immediately was able to correct what I thought were the defects in the first edition. So that book was published in 1997 as The Night Stalker Companion. And um, in between those two, I wrote the first original Kolchak novel, uh, what was then the first original Kolchak novel in 20 years. Jeff had written the, the original two, The Night Stalker and then The Night Strangler. And um, there hadn't been any 
uh, other novels or fiction done with the character in between. So a small publisher called Cinemaker Press that had specialized in doing uh, novels based on TV shows. They had done Beauty and the Beast and things like that. Um, they got the rights from Jeff to do original Kolchak novels, but Jeff wasn't really interested in doing one. And they said, well, who would you let do one? And he said, I'd let Mark do one because I like how he, he did Night Stalking. And so they came back to me and said, you're going to write the first original Kolchak novel in 20 years. And I said, I am. Uh, 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 I'm not even sure I can do it. So let me, um, I'll tell you what, I'll pitch you some ideas. I'll come up with like four or five concepts. If everybody agrees, you know, that there's a good concept in there, I'll do it. And uh, we all kind of agreed on the same one. Uh, and it was the one I thought was the best of the five. And Jeff thought it was, it was the best of the five. And so did the publisher. So that turned into Grave Secrets which was published in uh, 94 and that was followed in 97 by the Night Stalker Companion and then that was followed by uh, a publication called Richard Matheson's Kolchak Scripts which I edited and put together which are the three Kolchak scripts that Richard had written Night Stalker, Night Strangler and then the unfilmed Night Killers which was going to be the third movie but oh, never got made Yeah, it's something I always wish they could have done as like an animated movie years later it'd be easy to find someone to impersonate Darren's voice as a tribute to him but uh, I don't know if that would ever be possible well you know it, it was done as a comic book it was done uh, Moonstone who, which currently has the rights to doing uh, uh Kolshak uh, comics and, and short story anthologies. Oh, okay. um, I didn't know if they were still they, around they, anymore. <laughs> they, yeah, they actually have done uh, a, an adaptation of, of Night Killers. Oh. So um, it's there. And then the script itself, again, was published in this volume. So it's out there for you know anybody who's kind of interested to see uh, what a third movie would have been like. And, and Richard uh, wrote that with uh, William F. Nolan, um, the, the co-author of Logan's Run and other science fiction dandies and um so it, it it it's an interesting script and what's kind of interesting is you mentioned chris carter and uh before anybody who knew who chris carter was and before the x files premiered um you know chris would tell anybody who who, who asked and the only people who kind of asked were journalists and tv critics like me uh you know why are you doing this series and Chris would tell anybody that he was doing it because, as a kid, the, the Night Stalker had, had scared the pants off of him. So, uh, you know, it, it's inter what's interesting about Night Killers, the third movie, is it's the, it's the script that's most like an X-Files episode. It's the script that, that when you read it, you, <laughs> they never made it, so it, never, it couldn't have influenced Chris Carter. But it's, the, it's the, the one of the three scripts that uh, Richard wrote that, uh, that really does feel the most like an X-Files episode. But um, so anyway, that, the, uh, that sort of was the, uh, the nickel tour through um, my history with, with, the, with, the, with the character. In addition to uh, those books, I've written, so I've written a Kolchak novel. I've written a Kolchak short story for, uh, for Moonstone. I wrote a uh, Kolchak novella for Moonstone. Um, and then I wrote the history of the, the character. So, you know, uh, I, I guess uh, a, a fair amount of my resume uh, has Kolshak stamped on it. Um, did you ever meet uh, one of the other authors who, uh, from Moonstone that wrote a lot of short stories, had been on the show a couple times, and fortunately um, uh, he has passed away, C.J. Henderson? I, I knew C.J., yeah. I, I, C.J. and I... Uh, had a lot of phone conversations, especially when he was uh, tackling Kolchak for the first time. And CJ, you know, if, if you if you if you had talked to CJ once, you knew he was a character. You knew he was a, a character in this world. He was very outspoken and very uh, flamboyant. And, mm. uh, uh, and and yes, uh, I, I I did I never met CJ. Oh, um, we did have a lot of phone conversations. Uh, because he would call and ask, you know, uh, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Because um, for the first, I don't know, maybe about 10 years that Moonstone uh, was doing uh, Night Stalker stories, um, I had a, a, some phony baloney uh, title, Creative Consultant, on uh, the comic books. So if you look at the comic books for the first 10 years, you see Creative Consultant. And um, that... Uh, was a, a, a gloriously unpaid position 
to basically look over stories and decisions that different writers made and make sure that they did not violate the character in any way because during at that point I was the closest thing that Jeff Rice had to some kind of represent representative which was also an unpaid position which yeah I wouldn't have taken a dime for it anyway since I was Jeff's friend and not I'm not a lawyer I'm not a, an agent I'm not a representative of any kind or a manager of any kind so um, you know I, I was not a, it, it was not something I viewed as a professional uh, position but um, you know I, I represented Jeff uh, in every kind of negotiation um, and that includes with ABC and Disney when they tried to revive the Night Stalker in 2005 um, which was and, yeah there are reasons for that <laughs> and, and the reasons are not as apparent as they might seem that full story will be told if I get to update this Night Stalker book and do it again there's going to be a, a meaty chapter which will, will tell the story behind the story and the story behind the story is um, is, a, is a rather sad <laughs> and uh, and disappointing one um, but you know it's, it's easy to sort of point fingers of blame as to why that thing uh, failed as spectacularly as it did but uh, the fingers that you point might not be as obvious as you think they are. Mm, Let me put it that way. Interesting. So a little bit of a mystery story there. And, uh, and I'm kind of eager to tell it because I was a bit on the front lines as an observer during that whole time. And I saw everything that happened. You know, and it's, it's funny how longevity a show that was canceled after – it was canceled, right? Well – Yes. Okay. But, you know, who canceled it? It's got is always is is always been up for some debate. Okay. Uh, so the, the, Darren claims he canceled it. Gotcha. Um, the, da Darren basically said he was tired of doing it, and he went to the network and he went to the the, the studio and said, uh, "Cancel this thing." It's, and they uh, followed his wishes. It's it's funny the longevity Kolchak has had um, for a show that was a couple movies, big, huge, made for TV movies at the time. That TV movies were the hot friggin' thing. Um, something I'm really curious <laughs> if we're going to be... <laughs> I'm wondering if we're going to get back into the TV movies with the way the entire entertainment machine is going to be changed uh, when this is finally over. Um, well, I think we're already there. Um, yeah. You know, but a lot of movies the, are, are, uh, are, uh, are, uh, are... Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, um, but to I didn't want to diverge too much into the, the the whole topic about TV movies, but I just wanted to point out those were the two biggest TV movies of all time when they when they were aired, right? Uh, massive well, amount of ratings. The first one set the rating uh, record for for uh, a TV movie when it aired. It was surpassed a couple of times uh, by other movies, but yeah, if you have to. It was massive. I I show the Night Stalker uh, often to my students at Kent State in. Uh, one or more of the classes that I teach out there and uh, and I always set up the, the film by telling them that I'm about to show them the best known unknown vampire story of all time Gotcha. and they sort of shake their heads and like you know and I said well okay first off I'm going to tell you the title and not one of you is going to recognize it so this is a classroom full of 19 20 year olds and I say I'm going to show you a you know a TV movie from 1972 called The Night Stalker and sure enough, not one of them knows what I'm talking about. I think I watched it probably on the Sci-Fi Channel um, when it was on when Sci-Fi Channel actually used to show old TV series. Now it's filled with like a lot of their own original content or stuff that doesn't make any sense. Like like wrestling has been on the Sci-Fi Channel, um, and uh, the, the Sci-Fi Channel aired nothing but like old television shows, which was fantastic because you couldn't find them anywhere. Nowadays, it's click of a button, bam, it's at your house. The longevity that Kolchak has had through you know connecting to so other things, I had to like. I probably introduced so many people to Kolchak the Night Stalker that were friends, that were huge fans of a little-known CBS TV series that ran for nine seasons called The Big Bang Theory. Sure. And the reason why is because uh, Wallowitz's mother on The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Carol Ann Susie was. Uh, yeah, Carol Ann Susie, who, was a, uh, who was a, had a recurring role on Kolchak. She was the voice of Wallowitz's un, uh, un, never-seen mother in the background. Um, and Correct. I was like, do you know who that is? And she's like, they're like, no. And I'm like, well, 
I don't know anything about her career other than the fact she was in this one show. And did you like? The, I know you like the X Files. You should watch this show. And they're like, "What's it about?" And I was like, "It's the same thing like the X Files, but it's like one guy to, as a reporter chasing around monsters instead of like a couple FBI agents uncovering a giant alien conspiracy." And then he's like, "They're like, oh, that's interesting." And I'm like, "Yeah, ever seen the Christmas Story? That guy." <laughs> And it's amazing. The amazing thing is that, you know, I, I then explained to them that when the first movie aired, there were only three networks. Uh, <laughs> right. And, um, you we, know, we didn't even have an HBO yet, then yet, did we? And, and I, <laughs> and we didn't have Fox yet. And I explained to them what, um, you know, ratings and shares mean. And then I explained to them that uh, this movie got a, you know, a 33.4 rating which was, you know, one third of all the TV households, which is more than the one third of the populations because Nielsen counts households. And then I tell them he got a 54 share, which is the available audience at the time. How many were the percentage of the people actually watching television during the 90 minutes that this aired? And I said, this thing got a 54 share. That means that, you know, one out of every two people watching television was watching this in January of 1972. And who was watching it is important because, um, you know, well, number one, I was watching it. I was, uh, you know, uh, at the time I was 15 years old. I was a horror fan and uh, I immediately had a had a hero. And, uh, you know, I, I, I became a reporter because of uh, uh, of Night Stalker and Carl Kolschak and other reporters have told me the same thing. Oh, my God. But it's also more important that, you know, almost everybody who went on to create horror uh, in the next generation watched this and was influenced by it so whether that was chris carter because of the x-files or it was joss whedon and buffy the vampire slayer or it was the guys who did men in black or whatever um this thing joe dante uh you know you you talk to anybody of the generation that was about to come up and make uh the horror of the 80s 90s and on they were all influenced by by the Night Stalker. Uh, so it had a tremendous influence behind the, the, the culture. When people sort of say, you know, like, well, my kids don't recognize it and don't recognize the title, but they sure recognize the stuff that, that were created because of the Night Stalker. So it's the headwaters in a lot of ways. It's, it is, and then when I show them the movie, and remember, this is a 1972 low-budget TV movie with no special effects, no C. They are blown away by Darren McGavin's portrayal of Carl Kolschak. They love it. It's one of the very few things I show my students. Well, the only thing I was saying was that it's the only, about the only thing I show that my students get, get close to a 100% favorable reaction from 18 and 19-year-olds today. So what the magic that worked then still works now. I'm assuming you also have, um, before he passed away, you had met Darren McGavin? I interviewed him uh, a, a few times uh, for the book. The, the the most time at length was at it was a rainy January night in the early like 1990, uh, 1990 or 91. I can't remember which, but I was out there on business for the newspaper, and um, he invited me to come by the house. And Kathy Brown, uh, his wife, uh, kept making me uh, cup after cup of coffee while I plied Darren with question after question about playing uh, Carl Carl Kolschak. Um, so couldn't have been more gracious and couldn't have been more welcoming in, uh, in, in talking about the, the movies and the series and couldn't have also be more candid. I think one of the reasons that fans of, the, of my book, of the Night Stalker Companion, like it so much is because um, it's not a Valentine, which everything was great, everything was wonderful, everybody loved each other type of book. Darren was very candid. Matter of fact, everybody was very candid about what went right and what went wrong and uh, I mean you know it's no secret that Darren and Dan Curtis had an enormous blow up uh, on the second film they got along great uh, everybody got along great during Night Star uh, the first film was 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 a great experience all the way around and everybody loved working on it and it, it, it really did have a magic feel the second film uh, was very tense it was a much harder film to do and uh, Darren and Dan did not get along on the second film, and it, it ended up in a, in a in a pretty bitter fight at the end of the, uh, uh, the at the end of the shooting, where Darren walked off. And so, um, you know, it, the, the book is very candid about about things, and you know, the series was was a very difficult series. It was a 
it was the 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 poor stepchild on the universal lot um it was the one that got the least amount of money uh and the least amount of resources and it's the one that most writers didn't want to work for some writers made their first sale to the night stalker series basically because they could and they couldn't sell to the big shows at the time like columbo was one of the big show was probably the top tv show being produced at universal at the time um and then you sort of work your way down the hierarchy like McLeod and Macmillan and Wife and then way, 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 way down at the very, very bottom in the pecking order at Universal was Night Stalker. And um, so, you know, you had first off the story editor, the guy who got his chance to be the story editor on the show was a guy by the name of David Chase, who later is going to go on and create The Sopranos. Huh. So here's the guy. I mean, he's getting his start in the business. He gets this great opportunity to be, to be the story editor on the Night Stalker. And this guy's going to go on and create one of the great TV shows of all time. And, um, you know, and I interviewed, I interviewed David for uh, the book. Uh, but interestingly enough, when I interviewed him for the book, uh, he, he hadn't done The Sopranos yet. He, he had won an Emmy and... He was a well-established writer-producer, but my book came out before his greatest achievement. There was another young writer uh, on the Universal lot who made his first script sale to Night Stalker, and that was a kid named Bob Zemeckis, who would go on to do things like Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Back to the Future and Cast Away and all those sorts of things. And he understood that you, you, you're not going to sell to the high-end shows. There's a lot of competition there, but nobody wants to write for this show. So he made his first sale by writing an episode. He and his writing partner, Bob Gale, wrote an episode called Chopper, which was a sort of 50s motorcycle updating of the uh, Washington Irving Headless Horseman story. Oh, neat. Uh, the Headless Horseman, it was a headless motorcycle rider. Uh, did you ever watch the real Ghostbusters cartoon? Sure. Okay. There is an episode of the real Ghostbusters with a headless motorcycle, headless horseman. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I wonder if one person watched that episode of, uh, because you can't say that that's Ghost Rider because Ghost Rider doesn't rip his head off. <laughs> no, no, no. And, you know, and, and again, you know, the, they only did 20 episodes. Uh, the, the, you know, the, it, it was only one season. And you said before, you know, did it get canceled? And, you know, it's kind of a moot point whether Darren canceled it or not. Right. Um, the truth is it was going to get canceled anyway. Um, it, there were about 70 shows that season, and Night Stalker was all the way down at the very, very, very bottom of the list. Uh -huh. It was in a killer time slot on Fridays. It was up against the number one and two shows in the country on NBC, which were Sanford and Son and Chico and the Man. It was getting its kick in the ratings. And uh, it, it probably wouldn't have survived to a second season anyway. You know, everybody always says, oh, you know, uh, it should have had a second season. It wouldn't have had a second season. And it was on ABC at a time when ABC was in the toilet and was uh, the third ranked network. And uh, a few couple years later, Fred Silverman takes over ABC right after uh, the Night Stalker was canceled. And Fred Silverman takes ABC to number one by creating hits like uh, uh, Happy Days and uh, Charlie's Angels and Fantasy Island and Three's Company. And um, you have that era of sort of jiggle TV, it was called, because it relied on very uh, purient sexual type stuff. And uh, for its time, it looks very quaint now. Um, but ironically, a uh, Night Stalker gets canceled right before ABC becomes the number one network and it starts its ascendancy to that so um so it would have gotten canceled regardless of of that but there were only 20 episodes there's a, there's a sensibility to the series which because it was this 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 bastard stepchild on the universal lot <laughs> i think you know there was a kind of a funky um mentality that emerged from it with the writers and um it was, I think that's one of the reasons the series was as influential as it was, was because um, there was a very hip mentality to, to that show. And uh, there were a lot of young writers. And again, again, there were guys like David Chase, Michael Kozel, who was going to go on to co-create Hill Street Blues, and, and Bob Zemeckis. You know, none of them were horror writers. Not one. I mean, the only script 
of the 20 episodes that was written by an actual horror writer was uh, the episode which, not by coincidence, ended up being what I think was their best episode. And it's an episode called Horror in the Heights. And um, it has a great idea. The great idea is the, uh, the is a demon spirit called the Rakshasha, an Indian uh, demon spirit that comes to you in the form of the person you trust the most, whether that be your best friend or your wife or your mother. And this demon spirit comes to you in that form and embraces you in death. Well, that's just a great idea. That would be a great idea in any decade at any point. But the guy who came up with the idea and the guy who wrote the script was Jimmy Sangster. And Jimmy Sangster was the guy who wrote many of the great Hammer horror films. He wrote Horror of Dracula with Christopher Lee. And he had written, he was like the, the it, screenwriter for, for Hammer. It's funny so, you bring that up because I actually do a podcast called Boobs, Blood, and Badasses, the Hammer Horror Podcast on the Dorkening Network with my co-host Ro. And we actually just finished our, uh, our uh, most recent recording the other day with Satanic Rites of Dracula. So you know who Jimmy Sangster is, yep. and you know the impo- his importance. But he was the only real guy with horror credits who who worked on the series. Um, everybody else was, you know, ju- ri- mostly young writers just starting their careers, and they went on to do mon- marvelous, wonderful things. Um, but they were working on this show, which didn't have a lot of support from uh, the the studio or the network. And, um, you know, so out of that came this this kind of guerrilla sensibility you know, that it's, I think a lot of people just really now uh, appreciate greatly. You know, what's funny is that I've uh, I've always wanted Kolchak action figures. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's got all these monsters. Uh, there's, has there ever been a Kolchak figure himself? I'll tell you why not. Uh, you know, I get this question a lot, actually. Because he Just definitely has a po- he definitely has one for Pops from Christmas Story. <laughs> everybody, because not just um, uh, action figures, but models, people who are into models, and you know, the the, the horror horror fans are very much into that. You know, high end models as well as as action figures and all of these things. And this is the reason why um, that ha- it hasn't really come about in nineteen 19- when when the series went on the air. Uh, and you got to remember that the, the the movie was produced and aired by ABC, ABC Circle Films, which is now owned by Disney. Okay, so the series was made by a Universal, licensing the character through ABC, and neither of those entities had bothered to get the sequel rights to the from the creator of the character who is named is Jeff Rice. Jeff had written the original book on which the uh, the movie Night Stalker was based. And he got the creator credit on the series, which he deserved. Subsequently, uh, Jeff uh, filed the lawsuit against Universal and ABC for not securing his sequel rights. Now, mo- like most show business lawsuits, this one was settled on the day it was about to go to court. And a settlement agreement was made. And in the settlement agreement, the rights to Coal Shack got divided up. Now, if you want to do something, I'm just going to use this because it's another character of whom I wrote, I've written a book about, is Columbo. You know, Columbo, the rights are very clear cut. Universal owns anything and everything to do with Columbo, even though it was created by two guys named Levinson and Link. It, it, it's owned completely by Universal. The rights questions are very clear. If you want to do anything with that character, you go to Universal. They either license it or they don't. Mm. With Kolshak, everything got split up. ABC ended up with the dramatic rights to Kolshak. Dramatic rights meaning anything done in the movie and TV realm. They thought that would be the only thing worth anything back then in 1975. Jeff ended up, Jeff Rice ended up with the literary and some merchandising rights. So you had a split world you had a split world when it came to rights so you want to license an action figure and let's say you want to a- a license one of the monsters from the universal tv series who do you go to do you go to jeff rice because he has the merchandising rights do you go to universal because they own the the episodes they made or do you go to abc now disney because they own the dramatic uh, rights to it 
it's it's very confusing. I mean, we, it's, yeah, it's, it definitely it's, sounds like it. That, it, that, it, it. God, that sounds like it, an entire finance episode. You could be on a financial podcast or or radio show and 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 talk about that probably for hours. <laughs> well, yeah, and but that also worked to 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 the advantage of fans in the other way, which was when it came time to you know, like when Moonstone said they wanted to do comic books. That fell under literary and merchandising, right? So Jeff could authorize that. Okay, going. So the reason we had all that is because of that. Going back to that real quick, just just really briefly, uh, Kolchak, the Night Stark of the Night Killers. I I, I I profess myself to be a fan of the TV show and the movies. I bought the Blu-rays as soon as I found out there were Blu-rays of the movies. I was like, done, bye, because I love those movies. And good God, did they make do a good job with that HD transfer? It is amazing. If you have an HD TV, the Blu-rays for the two films are amazing they're so clear and clean and i didn't know about a third i think i'd heard about a third movie that was turned into something i can't find the third book story anywhere the the, the kolchak the night stalker double featured night killers it is nowhere listed on amazon or ebay is it out is it that out of print and hard to find now well i'll i'll i'll, I'll suggest something a little bit easier have you tried just going to the Moonstone site? Everybody <laughs> got to do that. And Moonstone offers these. So often enough when you can't find them at Amazon. Now, I'm not saying when you get there, it won't be out of print or out of stock or whatever. But often enough, it's all right there at the Moonstone site for a very decent price. Um, so, you know, one stop shopping or at least first stop shopping, go to the Moonstone. Uh, because Moonstone has pages and pages of Coal Shack merchandise that they, that they offer. And it's at their site, and you very well may find it there. I mean, there, there's, I, I get this question about other things. Um, I did a, 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 sh a short story, you know, and I did I did a story that was a, a crossover story that that arranged a meeting between uh, Carl Kolshak and the Barnabas Collins character from Dark Shadows. I love and, that story yeah. so much. <laughs> uh, I I uh, got. Uh, Dan Curtis's permission. I, I went to Dan and said, "I, you know, I'd like to do this story, and this is what I want to do." And he said, "I love it." And then I went to Jeff and I said, "I want to do this story," and he was cold. He said, "I love it." So I had permission of the two people who controlled the the characters, and I did that. So and people, you know, that story ends up in two anthologies, and, uh, and but they they did a big hardcover called the the, the night stalker compendium okay check the night stalker compendium so mark by and the way that is that is sold out on their website and it, it may but but up you know up to a little while ago you could pick it up at, at like it, it's it's cover price you know there so you know i always say check them first just yeah. before you even go to amazon before you go anywhere else check there yeah, so, it's um, yeah, it's sold out on their website, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, and, and I get, but I used to get that. I I get those questions all the time. Is you know, uh, but you know, the one that is 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 very very hard to find. Obviously, is not the Night Stalker Companion because th that was in print for about ten years. It was published in ninety seven, so it's you know it's been quite a while, and a lot has happened since then. Um, so I found yeah, some difficulty can, finding that when I first heard about it. I I. Well, God, I think I saw it at a store before I even knew what Kolchak was. My mom pointed it out to me, and I was like, oh, that's cool. But I didn't buy it. And then years later, when I got into Kolchak, watched everything, I tried finding that book. And Jesus Christ, I could not find it for less than like 60 to $70 on some aftermarkets. And I finally found one on some used bookstore website for like fourteen ninety nine. Well, that's great. Yeah, that's it's, it's, it's a great price. <laughs> yeah, you know? it, I, I was so lucky. I was like, done, buy immediately. I mean, I I don't think I bought something as fast as I and until recently. It was a copy of Hackers. If you're familiar with that movie, it was the 25th anniversary edition that came out five years ago. Cannot find it anywhere now. Completely sold out. Found it on some tech website that sells tech parts i didn't understand why they had it i emailed them and they said oh yeah we got like seven eight nine copies of this movie it came from some like store that went out of business they're apparently selling it on their front counter because it has to do with tech stuff and i was just like that is funny actually you know my colombo book which was published in 89 had a much bigger print run it had a dual print run of hardcover and paperback it was printed by a major publisher warner books and um when it went out of print after 10 years, that that was an even harder find than Night Stalker. And, and the prices went up accordingly. You, you would see that book listed regularly as three, four hundred dollars. Wow. Uh, that's on, crazy. Like, well, and, and, you know, it, it was crazy. I was, and, you know, uh, and I, uh, I, I was it was 
so upsetting to me to see people sort of held up for that. You know, so last year, you know, a, a, a small publisher uh, convinced me to reprint the Columbo book. And um, it has done so well. It has done, it, it just, the, it, they published it in November, and the next day it was number one at Amazon on books on film and TV. And because of the success of that, that's got me really thinking about updating the Night Stalker book. Stuff, I mean, just what happened to, to some people uh, like David Chase, you know, is again, uh, the very fact that the guy who was the story editor on the, uh, goes on to create The Sopranos is not even noted because that book was published in 97 and The Sopranos doesn't premiere until 99. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's just a lot of stuff. There's all the Moonstone stories that have been done um, and sadly almost everybody I interviewed for that book uh, has passed oh. um, you know there, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day and thinking is anybody from the movie the original movie still with us yeah because we yeah. lost Vincenzo uh, and uh, oh, very, Darren very quick, yeah. and Cy uh... si, si Oakland died yeah, very young but you know, within the last year, I think Carol Lindley and John Llewellyn Moxie, the director, have both passed. Oh, jeez. And I think, uh, I think Jordan Rhodes, who played the doctor, uh, Carl's uh, informant doctor in the movie, I think he's the last cast member. Oh, jeez. Who's still with us? Um, I think the rest of them are, are gone. You know, so and and most of the people from the series, um, Jack Greenwich, who played Ron Updike, is is still with us. Jack's a wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, Joanne Fluke, I think, is still with us from the from Night Strangler. Jeff but, Je um, Jeff Rice is dead too, right? Jeff passed uh, about three years ago. Yeah, 2015. Yeah. I didn't realize he was born in Providence. Yeah, huh. yeah he was. Yep. And uh, what? And and Jeff, that 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 I'm still not over. I'll I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Um, you know, I was able to get very close to a lot of the people uh, who worked on Night Stalker. You know, Richard Matheson became a very dear friend. And Jeff, you know, um, Jeff had a hard life. Oh. Jeff, Jeff's life was 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 mirrored a lot by his character. In that, life kicked him in the teeth a lot, and um, you know, he 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 he, did, he didn't get any breaks, and everything went against him. He he just you know, and and the fact that he sued Universal and ABC immediately blacklisted him in the business. You didn't do that, especially if you were just some young beginning writer. Uh, even established stars got in trouble and got blacklisted for doing things like that back then. So Jeff was, you know, he, he was he was slammed down pretty hard, and uh, you know he, he deserved a lot better than he got. You know that, that's not my actually. Uh, Boris Karloff said that about Bela Lugosi when 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 Bela died. Karloff famously said Bela was worth a lot more than he got. And you know, I'll borrow that line uh, and apply it to Jeff. He was worth a lot more than he got. Mark, where can um, where can people find out more information about this uh, revitalization of the companion book coming out or trying to? Well, you know, right here, <laughs> you're the first person I've talked to about. This. Oh, I feel honored, and uh, I'm such a huge I'm uh, I was such a huge fan of yours before I even knew who you were. You know what I mean? Sometimes you see authors, you don't know who they are until you really start investigating who they are, and you're just like, Jesus Christ, I know who this guy is, and my God, I'm a bigger fan of him than I realize. You, you know, and it's weird because I I have a really really deeply schizophrenic resume, and um. Uh, you know, five of my books are about Mark Twain, you know, and I have this whole life where I'm kind of this half-assed Mark Twain scholar, and I know these all these, the leading Mark Twain scholars, and, and, and they'll come up to me sometimes and go, I, I just found out that, you know, you, you were a newspaper guy, that you, you were a TV critic, that you spent all these years, I, I, yeah, yeah, that, that was the day job for a long time. Or somebody will come up to me and say, you're the same guy who does all the horror stuff, who does all the, the, the who did, you know, I finally did, got my Twilight Zone book uh, a couple years ago, 2017. I did a book uh, called Everything I Need to Know I Learned in the Twilight Zone. Right. So, you know, after all those years, I finally got that. But then there'll be people come up to me and say, you know, uh, you're that same guy. And it's, it is. It, again, I, I almost have this kind of Jekyll and Hyde type of thing with the uh, w w w with it. And, you know, and that's fun because, you know, I get to sort of indulge in that side of the, uh, uh, the interests. And then sort of go back and you know uh, do Mark Twain or do something else, you know. So it's um, 
it, it, it's fun not to limit yourself, you know, right. but always have that to go back to because I grew up um, in the 1960s. We didn't have this term, Chris, when I was growing up. I really appreciate you coming on the show with this, Mark. Please keep us up to date when the companion update gets going and something's happening with it or whatever. And I do hope that you and your family um, and everyone you know and love are safe right now during this uh, quarantine of uh, 2020. Well, thank you. You know, and 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 I will, and I uh, hope uh, we'll talk again. We'll talk Kolshak again down, the, and we'll have reason to in the near future. Absolutely, Mark. Absolutely. Thank you again so much for coming on the show with us. That's been fun. Thanks.